Hi guys, this is a disclaimer. Again, I am just vlogging uh, based on what I have been seeing in TikTok, YouTube, or any other social media regarding uh, an application or tourist visa in Canada. So this is just for me making my own comments. So it's a disclaimer. Again, I'm not an immigration officer. I'm not an immigration consultant. I have nothing to do with, with anything about... Uh, the, the laws in Canada or anything about uh, certain pathways. This, my comment is just based on my personal experience with my family when they applied for tourist visa or also to help guide our Kababayans that uh, thinking about using the tourist visa pathways to come abroad or somewhere else. Because again, tourist visa is all over the place. I just want to make you guys uh, manage your expectations and tell you the truth of why are you using the tourist visa pathways okay guys the truth of why we use the tourist visa pathways okay guys because i know lots of us they are not using it for the purpose of visiting okay so i thought i would like to tell you guys the fact of it and why some of you cannot do it and some of you can and again Please take care of yourself and um, protect yourself. I'm always, always uh, uh, um, educating the things that you need to be always protecting yourself and your family and your hard-earned money. Please, please. Thank you. Have a good day. And watch my uh, blog till the end because it's very, very informative. Um, please thank you share them to your friends so they will be able to understand what is really a tourist visa I'm also going to blog, uh, make a blog upload about how to apply a tourist visa uh, yourself okay thank you have a good day guys good morning our today's blog it's regarding about what I've been seeing on TikTok YouTube Facebook page regarding our tourist visa pathways in Canada. I wasn't going to uh, get involved my, myself or even make a comment or blog about it, but I thought, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of Orca Babayans that are being um, abused or taking advantage of their desperation to um, have their life uh, get better or their situation to improve. Okay, so let's start with the tourist visa. When we're doing a tourist visa, the purpose of the tourist visa is for you to enjoy travel, visit the country, and after you've done your merry way, visiting family, visiting locations, cities, and etc., the expectation is you're going to go back to your country and that's it. So you came in for a short visit, come back and go back home. The purpose of people that having the six months uh, stay or allowable stay for a tourist visa is for people that have family abroad, meaning you have a family in Europe, family in the States, family in Canada, Australia, or etc., 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 that you need to spend a longer time spending time with your family and usually most of those are catered for mom and dads or sister that's already well off or been in the retirement era or have money but lately i've been noticing that we are using the tourist visa pathways to say okay i wanna i'm really in a bind right now i'm tired in the philippines been working for too long or i've been working abroad in saudi arabia or somewhere else that they are not accepting for permanent residence or citizenship now it's time for me to go somewhere that accepting a change or accepting me to live permanently in that country and that's what's happening with the tourist visa and just like the student visa soon the government will catch up or somebody will say hold on a minute this is just becoming ridiculous and we need to change so for the tourist visa i found that or even watch on youtube or tiktok that people are complaining that they borrowed money they used their long time savings 
to come in here and then expecting that when they come in here, everything is a topsy-turvy or everything is perfect. You have to understand that it's not. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, it doesn't mean that you've been a manager, a long-time supervisor, or I'm a doctor, or whatever field you have or position you have. When you come to, an to an another country, you have to start from the bottom. You have to pay your dues. Don't say that, oh, I am a supervisor in there. I'm a doctor in there. I'm here and here. People just doesn't care about me or our fellow Kababayans is not even helping, da -da 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 -da, or whatever you guys notice. So again, it's your expectations that's going to put you in a disadvantage. Okay, guys? So let's go back to the tourist visa. So now the tourist visa, if you are using it just to make yourself in a, in a better position, then you need to have a wake-up call, okay? Because A, for example, I use my long time savings to come in here and I did not borrow it. So let's say as a show money, again, as a show money for the tourist visa is at least to have a minimum 100,000, for example, only. Again, this is a disclaimer. I'm not an immigration officer. I'm not, uh, nothing to do with any agency. I have no idea, but I am helping you guys or trying to give you guys a little bit of inside of my personal experience okay guys so as a tourist visa for example the minimum that you can have a show money is 100,000 on that 100,000 this is just an example on a hundred thousand for example you're one person only a hundred thousand that's not including this is just your show money to say you can afford to uh, travel you cannot say I have a hundred thousand and you're staying for six months because in reality you have to pay for your accommodation, you have to pay for your fares, you have to pay for your food and lodgings, uh, sorry, food, your travel, etc., etc. And when you turn that hundred thousand pesos to a dollar, it uh, it's a it's a there's a different story on that. Okay, so you cannot say I'm. Uh, it's okay if you're having a hundred thousand dollar, a uh, hundred thousand pesos. If you're only staying for one week or two weeks, but if you know you're staying and everything is in your own expense, in reality, you cannot survive of a hundred thousand pesos if you're staying more than two weeks or more than thirty days in a country. It's not gonna happen. Okay, the only way you can uh, expand that 100,000 pesos if you have family that you're visiting and all the places you're visiting are free. You're staying in a family, the food is free, the, the, the room is free, sure. So the only thing that you're going to spend is your uh, expenses like when you're outside buying food or your fare of tickets or your uh, transportation. So those, then you can be. But if you're expecting that you have this amount of money and you're staying for longer, you're sadly mistaken. Okay, guys, so that's the first mistake that people mostly have using the tourist visa. And then when you have a tourist visa and you come to this country, let's say to Canada, in order to, for you to change that tourist visa to work, you need to have a permit. You cannot work in Canada without a permit. You need to have a permit. And it depends on your situation or your skills. You, may, you might be in a medical field or you might be in a, a skilled worker. Again, it will dictate if you will need a permit or not. Okay. So again, beware of all these agencies that's asking upfront fees or big fees just to get an LMIA. The LMIA's fee is $1,000. I don't know. It could change. It could be more. I don't know. But those are the fee and it should be provided by the employer. And the employer's expectation if they are giving you LMIA is you're going to stay with them for two years. The only time you can change it is, for example, the, your, the, the environment is not safe. Something happened and you realize that you're working in that company. And it's again, it's not safe, not following the, the labor market, um, uh, what they call that policy, uh, safety. 
everything then you can change but if the company is doing well they expect you to, to do two years there's also some companies or smaller companies that have lmia giving you lmia but they would say i'll give you lmia but you're the one who's going to pay for it and that means when you pay for it again that depends on your um uh conversation with your future employer or your employer wannabe if you could bring that lmia or you can leave or quit once you have your LMIA and go somewhere else. But remember, MLI, LMIA is a job specific, employer specific. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to go to McDonald's, now I'm going to Tim Hortons, or I'm going somewhere else. You can't. You have to apply. Every time you're changing employer, you have to change your working permit. The only time you will allow to work anywhere else if you have an open permit that you can work on any companies. Okay, guys? And then now, once you have the tourist uh, visa, let's say somebody is going to give you LMIA, you make sure that you cover yourself by doing extension of your tourist visa. Don't just rely and say, I already applied for working permit. I'm waiting for it, so I'm okay if I surpass my six months. Please, please protect yourself. If you know that the application is going to take longer, is to do an extension of your visit, okay? And not only you need to do an extension of your visit, you need also to purchase a health insurance. Make sure that you're covered on your stay in here because if something happened with you remember think of your family and not every Filipino in the community will be able to help you or somebody would be able to help you if you are sick remember they have other families too or their own families to think of before they even help you they will help themselves so don't think that oh they just been here for a long time They've been already high and mighty. They couldn't even do something for me. Please don't. Don't think about that kind of mentality. Even if they wanted to help, if they are buying to their family, they will help their family first before a stranger. Okay, guys? So please protect yourself. Extend your visitors. Uh, if you have a six months um, visa, may, uh, pay for the extension, and then purchase yourself the health insurance. However, you, whatever is that uh, processing that was given to you when you submit your permit uh, application for the permit. So if it says 120 days, that means within that 120 days. But again, give yourself leeway to always uh, have something to fall back onto, okay? So now, once you have your uh, application, and everything like that your expectation is very important too because not everything is icing on the cake when people are saying oh let's go to alberta alberta is hiring or let goes no you guys need also to be prepared alberta it's not only about the job that you guys are looking for it's also everything. Don't just look at it as a one way. You need to think of the weather. Are you guys going to be able to stay in the weather that's really, really cold? Are you going to be able to stay where there's not a lot of population of Filipinos? Are you going to be able to stay with, um, with a minimum amount in your pocket? The accommodation. Right now, there's a shortage of accommodate, living accommodations in Canada. Okay, guys, there's a shortage of living accommodation. And because of that, lots of people, again, are taking advantage. The rent are, are very high. Uh, you can rent a room shared together and still paying arms and a leg. So that's another thing that you guys have to be prepared while you're waiting for your, for your permit. And then even if you have a permit, manage your expectation. Second, if you've been already holding a position higher, are you really willing to pay your dues? Are you really willing to pay from the bottom? Not everybody gets lucky and say, I have this position, I'll be working in the same position. No, not everyone is lucky. You Maybe you look at yourself again, set a special goal. Most people that starting abroad, starting on any country, Expect yourself that you are really are nobody, really. 
Nobody, even the Filipino will say to you, you have to start from the beginning and manage your expectation. That's the best thing I could uh, advise to you guys. Pay your dues, work from the bottom, like they said, put your foot under, put your foot inside, and then slowly put the second feet, and then your legs, your body, and then work your way up and prove yourself that you are capable and be able to do the job or move up, okay? So that's the best thing that you can do. Second also that you need to expect is that how far or how fast you're going to be able to adjust in the country. Not only the job that you're going to adjust, the environment, the people, and um, uh, your expectation, am I going to have a house in one year, two years, cars, and everything? Again, it depends on your job and willingness to, um, I call it um, improve. It's your willingness to, uh, I call it eat your pride. Usually that's what it is. It's, okay, which one am I thinking? Am I thinking about my family or I'm thinking about my pride or am I thinking about what people is going to say to me or going to do to me because this is what I have or this is what I am. Okay, guys? So those are the things that uh, need to be addressed when you have doing the tourist visa because a lot of people are taking this pathway and they are not prepared. And then when they arrive in here, problems arises and then you're going to make, oh, I came to Canada, I went to Alberta, it's too cold, there's no job, there's no this, or they need an Almea, I'm being asked, I'm being asked to pay 10,000 here, 15,000 here or whatsoever. You really need to do research first before you do the tourist visa application because in reality the tourist visa is really for people that can afford to travel and vacation that's the purpose of the tourist visa is for people to spend time with family that's been away for a long time and spend quality time the tourist visa is not for people to use to say i'm going to change my mind and my my lifestyle i'm going to find i'm going to apply for for permit i'm going to work i'm going to do this no that's a wrong wrong mentality okay guys so hopefully this helped a little bit again if you need any information please please go to the government website government of canada website if you already have an account go log into your account click all the links read 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 reading is the key information is knowledge okay guys please don't just ask somebody or comment on any of the Facebook's page because sometimes you get a wrong answers and then you get more confused. All the answers are on the GC. Yes, they, you need sometimes also, sometimes you would need agency or immigration consultant because yes, they are the one who knows the uh, way of in and out of the processing or the law and everything but if you're just applying for a very simple uh, uh what they call that uh way if you just want to do a tourist visa if you just wanted to you would be able to do that in the website and you it's free okay as long as you know how to read as long as you know how to follow it's very free so now the next time i'm going to do the blog i'm going to do the blog on how to apply the tourist visa your way okay guys this this uh, quick um uh yapping of whatever i'm doing on the on the on the camera right now is just about specific uh tourist visa but i'm going to do another blog on how to apply the tourist visa on your own okay guys have a good day thank you take care it's rosa again thank you for watching please share my 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 vlogs to help other Kababayans or other Filipinos or other people that thinking on applying for a certain pathways in Canada. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.